Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with sausage ribs. That's right. Have you ever been eating Italian sausage and thought to yourself, mmm, these are delicious, but I wish there was a bone in them? Me too. I think we all do. Anyway, I think I've solved that problem with this delicious baby back ribs recipe, which utilizes some of your favorite Italian sausage flavorings. And I don't know about you, but after all that fancy holiday feasting, I am ready for some good old fashioned football food. So let me show you what we did. So first up, we're gonna make our dry rub. And one of the signature flavorings in Italian sausage is of course fennel. So I'm gonna grind some whole fennel seeds in my mortar and pestle. All right, not quite to a powder, but fairly fine. Something like that. I'm gonna toss that in a bowl. I'm gonna add some freshly and coarsely ground black pepper, some sugar, some garlic salt, and some kosher salt. All right, I'm gonna give that a mix. And then there's that awkward moment when you realize you forgot the cayenne. Put it in, all right? So we're gonna mix that up and our dry rub is done. And it's on to our rack of baby back ribs. And by the way, that's enough rub for two of these racks. But I'm just going to demo one. And in these modern times, our baby back ribs come pretty much ready for the oven. There's no real trimming you have to do. I am going to flip this over, though, because on the bone side, there is a membrane that some people like to peel off. I don't. I paid for that membrane. I'm going to eat that membrane. But what I will do is take a very sharp paring knife and give it a bunch of slashes this way and that way and the other way. And that will help the dry rub permeate the meat, and we don't have to peel that off, okay? So that's good. Once that's done, you're going to sprinkle your dry rub liberally over that side. All right, make sure you have total coverage. I'm going to flip that over bone side down onto a foil lined baking sheet. And then go ahead and apply the dry rub to the meat side. All right, you want to be very generous, of course. Every bit of that surface area should be covered with the spice mix. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and put that in a preheated 275 degree oven. That's right, a very low oven for about an hour and a half. Okay, I'm going to flip it over so the meat side's down, bone side up. And I'm going to put it back in for another hour to an hour and a half until this happens. It's fork tender. And here's how you're going to test it with a fork. So stick the fork in between the bones, and if it goes in just like that, with only a minimum amount of pressure, that's perfect. Now we're going to cut these up, but we got to let them cool completely before we do that. So just set them aside. While we're waiting for that to happen, let's make our glaze, because these are, after all, baby back ribs. So we do want a little sweetness, a little tanginess to offset the heat and the spice. So in a small saucepan, I'm going to add some brown sugar, some orange juice, some rice wine vinegar, some crushed red chilies. I'm using those Calabrian chilies, but you could use any spicy ground chili sauce or just red pepper flakes or hot sauce. Up to you. I'm also going to add some orange zest. I really love the Italian sausages that have the black pepper, the fennel, and that little hint of orange. I think that's super delicious. So I'm going to give that a stir. I'm going to put that over medium heat, and we're just going to bring that up to a simmer, and we're going to cook it until it reduces by about half. We're just making a simple glaze. All right, don't worry too much about exact measurements. When it looks like about half is boiled away, turn it off. Your glaze is done. All right, by that time, your ribs should be cool enough to cut. And here's your pro tip for the day. If you put the knife in and it won't cut, you're hitting a bone. Move the knife over about a half inch. All right, so as long as your knife is placed between the bones, it should cut through fairly easily, just like that. In a couple spots, there might be a tiny bit of cartilage you got to cut through. No big deal. If you're not prepared to cut through a little bit of cartilage once in a while, I'm really not sure if you're worthy to be eating these delicious baby back ribs. So you're going to cut those up. We're going to throw them into a mixing bowl. We're going to pour over our glaze. We're going to mix that well. I was trying to be neat and use the tongs, but then I realized just flip it. Flip it good. So I did. And by the way, chef's prerogative. If any small, tiny pieces of meat fall off, you get to eat them. That's the rule. So once those ribs are coated with the glaze, we're gonna place those back onto the sheet pan. This time I'm using my silpat, but you could use foil again. I just think the silpat's easier. By the way, do not throw away any of the extra glaze. We're gonna paint some more of that on later. We're gonna put those in a hot oven, 425, for five minutes. We're gonna take them out. We're gonna add a little more glaze. We're gonna flip those over and just go ahead and paint on whatever glaze you have left. And those are gonna go back in the oven for another five to 10 minutes or until they're glazed to your personal satisfaction. So for me, five or six more minutes did it. And yes, those do look very scrumptious. Last up, of course, you're gonna transfer those into some kind of serving platter. You should probably let these cool a few minutes before you bring them out to your friends. All right, they're starving and someone will grab one and burn their fingers, which I guess would be kind of funny, but still inappropriate. All right, so let them cool a minute and then dig in. It should take a little bit of a bite to get it off the bone, but at the same time, it should come off the bone completely clean. 
All right, very tender, very succulent, but not simply falling off the bone. I think that would be cooked too much. And yes, the flavor will remind you of an Italian sausage with that fennel and that black pepper and that garlic and the orange, etc. Really, really nice combination. Put a couple beers on ice and give me a plate of these and I am one happy chef. So I hope you share in this happiness and give these a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.